What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo. Joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I was at the doctor's office, and I saw the article. I sent it to you immediately. Even John Campia, who doesn't, who says, um, reading anything into test screenings doesn't mean anything. But yet, when Jeff Snyder, who's supposedly very re reputable, Brian, has said that he's gotten reports from people and people have told him that this movie is testing horribly. To no surprise to us, Brian, what did what did it for me was when Jason Momoa was writing the treatment for this. That was, I think, I think that was confirmed, right? He was writing, I think he even said it himself that he and a friend of his wrote this. Of course, the billion dollar man has to have his say can't say no to him. And then you, and now you get this. Brian, what do you make of all this? How does it affect? Because Peter Saffron's name is written all over this as well. He's, he's producing this, Brian. Yeah, he's one it, of them. Yep. And he's also producing uh, Shazam. What do, in this scenario, Brian, first of all, what do you think about the reports uh, that we're getting? And. Does do you, if you're Saslov, do you, are you looking at Peter Saffron um, out of the corner of your eye like what's going on? Are, are you capable of delivering like you said you th you you were going to deliver? Well, this pro this production has been troubled pretty much from the get go. Uh, I think you know your concerns basically date back to Aquaman one. You are definitely in the in the camp of marveling at how that made a billion a billion one. But the, <laughs> but the irony is, you know, the irony is right about now, it almost feels like they would kill for Amber Heard to be the biggest distraction they've got going on this project. She didn't even make the list of issues people had with this movie at this point. They so said Aquaman she doesn't even matter. So Aquaman 2, The Lost Kingdom, from the very get-go, as you said, it, it felt like James Wan lost control of this project in the sense that Momoa really kind of took over the script writing. We don't know if he wrote, I don't know, he wrote the screenplay, but we know he wrote a treatment and that he's been crowing that the story kind of co-opted or ran with sort of his, I don't know, pro-environmental, pro-water. He showed up on commercial flights, handing out like his special brand of water to passengers. And like, he basically sounded like he turned this sequel into an ecological crusade. And then as that was occurring, the whole Amber Heard, Johnny Depp thing kind of came to a head. We had the petition to remove Amber Heard from the movie. So that kind of created a cloud over the production. And then we got the real hint that at a corporate level, I think there were some red flags, which was there was that point where David Zasloff on one of his early earnings calls made a reference to having seen Black Adam, no less and having seen the flash and he said those movies are great and he didn't say anything Thing about about this movie which then mysteriously was not promoted anywhere on the circuit this past year and then was delayed an entire year and so like that's a watch what they do not what they say when they do when studios do stuff like that there's problems yeah. and now we get the word as you said yeah, look, test screenings are not everything. And oftentimes small changes, you know, in edits can lead to big audience response changes as well. But in this case, the stuff that's being leaked, it's pretty damaging. <laughs> stuff about people walking, walking out of out. test screen, which is unheard of. And then the B word, boring. Brian. Boring. <laughs> this is... You remember the movie, the Aquaman movie that was being made by James Cameron and Entourage? This is that. This has come right. to life. Bitch and chase. <laughs> <laughs> we knew this movie was doomed from jump. Even when they did Fandom, when Jason, when they were doing the clips, like everybody looked like they didn't want to be there. Jason Momoa especially. There's no excitement around this this movie. None whatsoever. 
ever. We don't hear about it. All we see is Jason Momoa, and that's the only reason this movie made a billion dollars. Not because it was great. Certainly, it has some great visual effects, and, and there were some things about the movie that were okay, but this movie wasn't a billion dollars. That was a fluke. It's a great point. So... I always use the sports analogies and I think it's, I liken this movie to a team that gets lucky for a season and the front office doesn't understand they got lucky. They think, <laughs> so I, I do not mean to throw shade at the Minnesota Vikings, but <laughs> they're a team that, Obviously, it was one of the top teams in the NFC this year, but they got outscored over the course of the season by the opposition. So statistically, they were a mediocre team that had a great record. Yeah. So it would be like their front office saying, no, we're contenders. We're one player away. <laughs> when if you if they're honest with themselves, they would say, we got lucky. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. throw it back. I'm not asking you to throw it back, but understand who you are. I don't think any of us truly knows how this movie made a billion one. What we do know, as you said, was the charisma of Jason Momoa got you some of the way. James Wan's credibility, especially, I think, in Asia, because that's where the huge turnout was, clearly got them some of the way. And then I think for some reason, and I like it more than you, but like that kind of 80s neon palette and style they came up with kind of just worked for people. Yeah. It's like, it's not something that you would have predicted, yeah. but it did kind of land, especially with global audiences. This was not a, this was a 300 million US. That's solid. That's not yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. But it was 800 million outside the US. That is what made this a mega hit. I think I would also lob in there. And I, I'm starting to like, as we see these box office numbers, I think we have to look at 2018 and 19 as like the bubble of superhero movies a little bit because mm -hmm, look mm -hmm. at the numbers yeah yeah even for and i get it i'm not i'm not saying black panther and infinity war and endgame didn't deserve the numbers the only point i'm making is in those two years everything the genre put on screen made bank everything captain marvel made a billion joker made you a go. billion you yeah. put a superhero in the in the genre the film went straight to the bank so i'm just saying any movie that had success in that time frame, I think we got to take a step back and say well, the audience is not there for those projects the same way they were back then. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think Aquaman, I don't think the cast and crew, and the, I don't think they recognize that. It yeah. seems like they didn't grasp what worked and they kind of went off on their own tangents and their own directions and kind of changed the formula. And now you're getting the word that maybe that's way off the rails, but it's too late to fix because the movie's basically done. Let's see. We haven't seen the movie, but listen, those guys that are seeing these movies early and people people talk. You know, why why would they want to tear this movie down? Why? Well, again, it, it, you have to also look at it in the context of we in this day and age, you get a lot of information from test screenings everywhere. I would argue I don't look at test screenings so much in absolute. I look at them kind of more relative to each other. And mm -hmm. so that's why it's like we know what the test screen reaction was to Black Adam, and now we've seen the movie. So you kind of have like, that, that's a reference point. We know, we haven't seen the flash yet, but we know the testing scores have been off the charts there. So yeah. just relatively speaking, you'd be like, all right, well, I'd be shocked if the flash was the same, even in the same tier as Black Adam, right? You just expect it to be better. It's not gonna be that. So that's why when we hear, we didn't hear this kind of flack thrown at Batgirl at Black Adam, like the tag, one of the worst DC projects ever made is being floated around this project. I, that that's saying something. That is saying something. <laughs> when, you, when you get that moniker slapped on you, and to your point, like we just saw, it's it maybe a, maybe the the perfect analogy, but we're just seeing right now with this very divided reaction and, and lukewarm reaction to Ant Man: Quantum Mania that the fans of the style of Ant-Man 1 and 2 are kind of feeling betrayed by the changes to that character and formula in the third. And so yeah. that's kind of what you're referencing here. It's like, who knows? Okay, fine. If, if, if 
if someone really loved the look and feel of Aquaman 1, that's their right as a consumer. But if Aquaman 2 messes with that, that same person is not going to blindly say Aquaman 2 is great. They're going to be angry that yeah, Aquaman yeah. 2 took away the things they liked about the franchise. And yeah. that's what feels like is happening. Yeah. Something else, Brian, that's supposed to come out. I don't know if there were any rumors about the test screening for Shazam 2, but it, see, it seems to be tracking less than its predecessor, Brian. This is one L after another for DC. And guess whose name is attached to two of those films? Yeah, Saffron's the lead on, on the Shazam movies. Yep. Again, Brian, if you're Sassoff, are you looking at Sassoff as, as Saffron crazy right now? I think the thing that'll probably save Shazam on a relative basis is the budget's only $100 million. So, and the first one made 363. So if you, if you just knock out and say, hey, this one's only going to make 300. Saffron's going to come back at you and say, I'm still in the black. That's what he's <laughs> going to say. I kind of feel bad for Zachary Levi and this and this whole project because I just didn't see a path for how this could be successful. Like Shazam 1 was liked by critics and kind of lukewarm received by audiences. Like yeah. decent, 363 is on a $100 million budget is profitable. But again, that's not amazing in the context of where superhero films were headed at that time. Yeah. And now the sequel comes along at a time where it's a very crowded marketplace. DC's in transition. So everyone kind of knows like this franchise isn't going anywhere. They, the franchise gets totally stiff armed by the rock who quite honestly should be in and have his fingerprints on this movie as black Adam in some capacity. And it's completely sworn off the character. Yeah. So that's, that, that stings for them. So that's why I'm, and then on top of that, now you're like, Ant-Man comes out is not well received right before it. It's a tough spot. I actually kind of, I'm like, I don't even know if Shazam, if Shazam was awesome. I don't even know if the tracking numbers would be better than the first movie. This one just kind of feels like it's like the ultimate lost in the shuffle of growing superhero fatigue and not having a future in the new DCU. How much tolerance do you think Zaslav will have? Do you think he's going to hold his frustration out? to when superman comes out oh yes. to a blue blue beetle i think blue beetle no, is gonna be fantastic superman Sup i mean it has to be superman right it, it rides on superman we said this yes. whole this whole exercise of like everything they introduce at the end of the day yeah. if super if superman legacy has the same outcome as superman returns we're not going to see a lot of these proposed projects we're just not yeah. Zaslav does understand there is a transitionary period and James Gunn and Saffron, you know, Saffron's name is on these movies, but James Gunn has very clearly drawn a line about around, you know, look at, look at the 2023 commentary that he's offered. What has he told you? He said, Flash is quote, one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. That's, crazy. That's the new guy telling you that about a project that was already in the hopper that had a lot of controversy around it. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. He chose to do that, which means James Gunn is saying, that's a winner. I yeah. want I want to be affiliated with that outcome. Yeah. He then said, I am adding Blue Beetle to my DCU. A choice, again, did not have to do that, which yeah. means he believes that's a winner. Yeah. But he didn't do that for Shazam and Aquaman. Yeah. So that, that tells you James Gunn's assessment of the chances for success. Doesn't mean he's right. It just means that's what he's betting on, which means weirdly Peter Saffron's kind of betting against himself because obviously he's aligned with James Gunn in the new DCU and he kind of has to disconnect a little bit from the stuff he's he's put out before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you just got to, I, I just got to give it up to James Gunn. I think we got to give it up to James Gunn for being honest. And saying what's you know what he feels, and to for him to say that Flash is one of the greatest superhero films he's ever seen, that's saying something. And 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 like you said, having saying Blue Beetle, I want that because he he thinks that's dope. So we have certain things to look forward to, but again, if I'm sass off, I'm looking at him crazy. The weird thing is, like, when they greenlit Aquaman 2, you would have sat there and said, okay, 
the safest things DC has on the board right now. Because remember, this would have been pre-Matt Reeves, Batman, all that sort of stuff. The safest things they have would have been Wonder Woman and Aquaman. Wonder Woman 3 is dead. Yes. And Aquaman 2 has all the feel of they wish they could cancel it, but they're in too deep. <laughs> so the irony is, it's riding on the Flash. That's the, what it's come to. And they are so all in on the Flash, Pablo. They're screening the entire movie in April at CinemaCon for wow. the movie theater industry. That you usually do not do wow. unless you think you have a home run, which means they want the buzz for that movie out six weeks before opening weekend. They are all in on the Flash. Wow. I think we probably have to do another show one day about I perhaps after this movie comes out and it does what it does, whatever it is, and the potential of Andy Muschietti doing a lot more projects for DCU moving forward. Obviously, I think that will happen. Brian, what do you think? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, it's also CinemaCon just happens to be <clears throat> this is so funny with James Gunn's worlds colliding. CinemaCon is April 25th and Guardians of the Galaxy opens the next week. So they are going to try to position Flash Buzz a week ahead of James Gunn's la farewell movie to the MCU coming out in theaters to try to get a jump on the hype train because they're yeah. they are so convicted that this movie is going to be a massive winner for them. And they have to have it because they yeah. they don't have, that's the thing is Blue Beetle can be awesome, but we know it's a smaller scale project. Man. Man, that's man, that man. just it's not gonna if, if blue beetle see it, blue beetle's like ant-man if blue beetle sees 400 500 million they're gonna be that's... cartwheeling around the studio <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of uh the aquaman 2 rumors uh, how shazam 2 is looking to get out of the gates with not up to par numbers as what it did previously. Uh, and none of it is, is a surprise to us, Brian. None of it. When I see that trailer, Brian, can I get a witness? Really? I could we, that. That's the only thing. We I mean, it's February 22nd. Aquaman's coming out of Christmas. We haven't seen any footage of any kind. No poster, no promotional material. I mean, honestly, the... Honestly, before oh this, God. before this, the most promotional material we got in this movie was Clown Wolf. <laughs> Brian, I might have to go to my friends back in the hood and get that bootleg and get that bootleg because <laughs> I don't want to go to the theaters to see. Henry Moran is, what's her name, Helen? Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu, you know, they're, they're great actresses. Um, and yeah, I feel sorry for Zachary Levi, but I don't know if I can stomach watching the whole two two hours watching these people fight. I can't. And, and the whole, there's just too much going on. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I just can't yeah. do it. And there's, so the other thing too is like, we've gotten to this point where, like I said, this project is so, this project in Aquaman 2, because we kind of know that they're just petering out really without an ending. You haven't seen a lot of buzz that apparently so apparently gal gadot is in shazam 2. really I, so supposedly one of the trailers in asia you can there's like a clip or you can see her or like a like basically people doing detective work saying he's talking to her in one of the trailers and it's like which kind of makes sense because i mean the gods all that sort of stuff links back to themiscara and like but nobody cares because right now it's like gal's in limbo wonder woman 3 is dead and it's like, so it's like, there's no buzz at all around her popping up in this film anymore. This is another Dark Phoenix. That's what we got on our hands. A movie that nobody cares about. That no, Although although I thought Dark Phoenix was okay. Yeah, we it, went and just, saw that together. I think because yeah, yeah. our expectations were so low when we went, went into that movie that like, we were this like, wasn't that this bad. is not the worst movie <laughs> we've ever seen. It's the, it's the, we didn't care about this movie because we knew it was going nowhere <laughs> nowhere but then the other thing that happened with this movie with shazam unfortunately is the whole zachary levi 
Pfizer tweet that went out. So like, that's the other thing that is not helping this project. So it's just, you know, I think again, it's like DC has to promote this. Warner Brothers has to promote this because they're, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. But I, I think they just can't wait. They can't wait to get past this. And I think the thing that's actually going to help them, when I was looking at this today, because I was like, you know, I was like, wait a minute, wait, what? You know, I know Superman Legacy summer of 25, and I'm like, all right, so I got Aquaman's Christmas of 23, and that sounds like it might be a bust. And I was like, what's in between? And it's it's a nice pause. It's just Joker 2. They have Joker 2 in the fall slot, 2024, so exactly five years after the original. They have nothing else, Pablo. I think it's actually going to work out great for them that they yeah. have 18 months with one Elseworlds project and nothing else on the big screen to get ready for Superman Legacy. I think Disney would kill to have that right now. They can't get away with that, but I think yeah. I think that break is going to do them some good if they announce him as Lobo at Comic-Con, which I think makes all the sense in the world. He can do the promotional tour for Aquaman 2 and spend as much time talking about his future as Lobo as talking about the actual movie he's promoting, which I think is exactly the way he's gonna want it if this movie yeah. turns out to be as bad as people are saying. And if it turns out to be as bad as people are saying, Brian, and if, I don't know if I wanna see Fast X, but his character doesn't look that appealing to me. I've seen it before. Will you be Jason Momoa out? That you may wanna see someone else as Lobo. I was I was looking at the Rock's cousin, who's the the the, the number one wrestler right now, Reigns. Ra oh, Roman Ra Roman Reigns. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if the, if you start hearing that name, Jason Momoa, better be scared. Well, I think the good like I said, the good news for Momoa though is it's not like Lobo would be in front of the camera anytime soon. So I think it's Fast X comes out this summer. You get which is that movie will make money. Um, all those movies do. I actually think it looks fun. Uh, as though, I actually think he looks kind of like Lobo. And there's a couple of shots where he's on a motorcycle, and I'm like, oh, he's, exactly. he's not that far removed. If we just put a space background around that. We we kind of be there. But um, um, and you know, and, and you know, artists are gonna do that. Artists are gonna are gonna do <laughs> create those. That's it. Everybody's doing go. that already. But then, like you know, and even if Aquaman is bad, the earliest we could see him again. That would be like if he does pop up in Superman Legacy. So that's again, that's 18 months later. So like if Jason Momoa just lays low, basically on the big screen, I think people will be very receptive to him coming back as a different character by that point. So yeah. Let us know in the comment section below. Hit that like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. <laughs>